The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? It's the week of June 17th, 2019. This is Might Be Sports. I'm Taylor Cooper. With me, as always, Kevin Reavy. What's up, Reavy? Good Reavy. to be back. What's up, CJ? How's it going? What's up, Andrew DeCheco? Yo, what's going on, man? Everybody's here tonight. Uh, Kevin Reavy was out of town last week. Uh, as uh, if, if you didn't get a chance to listen last week, co-host Kev from Might Be News was on, gave us extensive Stanley Cup coverage. Uh, and by extensive, I mean we talked about it for about three and a half minutes, five minutes, which is way more than you're going to get this week. Revi, how was your 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 time off? It looks like you had some adventures. Yeah, I drank a lot, <laughs> ate a lot. Um, oh man, it was a lot. Uh, holy shit, New Orleans, pretty cool town. Uh, a lot of awesome bars. How long um, were you there? Uh, shoot, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, four, four days, nice. four days. Nice. I've never been there. And then, uh, yeah, it's great. They got, um, was that your first time there? First time. Nice. And, um, went with my girlfriend, she's going back to new Orleans in two days because she freakishly loves new Orleans. It's weird. Was she's, that her first time being there? Super. In, oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> she wanted to, to experience my first time at in New Orleans. So I said, all right, let's go somewhere. She said, I want to go to New Orleans. I said, you're already going to New Orleans. She said, I want to go to New Orleans again. And I said, I'm not going to argue with you. Let's just go. Sounds cool. little weird you want to go twice in one month. Did it live but up hey, to the hype? If you're into it, you're into it. But you did not use the finest taxi service New Orleans has to offer. Yeah, C- CJ knows a guy that um, drives around a golf cart. Production. and uh, Of course he does. <laughs> yeah. Of course he does. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. I know yeah. who production is, but yeah. of course CJ knows somebody who drives a golf cart for tam- transportation There's in New Orleans. There's a lot of walking that goes on in New Orleans. Yeah. I, I had the hardest time um, getting drunk and staying drunk because we're jumping bar to bar. We're trying to see as many spots. We got restaurant reservations, all this stuff. And um, it was really hot and we're walking a lot. And it's like we're working off the alcohol. And I couldn't really get drunk. And I'm I'm drinking beers primarily. That's what I drink. And it was just hard to sustain. Yeah. Like my belly was full. Yeah. But my brain was clear. And that's not a good combination. So here's a lesson. Everyone going to New Orleans, look for production with his gold golf cart. He doesn't have a uh, taxi certification, so it's all tip based. So make sure you tip well. Wow. Yeah. So there you have it. good advice. That was a great time. Awesome food. Awesome times. It wasn't great Wednesday morning waking up at, well, like three o'clock in the morning to a text message saying your flight's canceled. Oh. And then we had to reschedule flights. So, and I'm not those, one of those guys who says like, oh, screw you, Frontier. Oh, uh, I'm never flying you again. Um, <laughs> and go to, but I mean, seriously, I might never fry, fly Frontier again just because. I, I never even heard of Frontier. They do yeah. consistently screw up. They're but right I mean, there with Spirit. Yeah, oh. I always thought it was yeah. so arrogant that like, um, you know, Joe Miley, who has like two followers on Twitter, goes on there and says, hey, Frontier, why'd you delay my flight three hours? What's that all about? Well, you just lost a valuable customer, Frontier. Yeah. Like, OK, Joe, like, yeah. who Go, cares? Yeah. They don't care about you. It's like. What do you think they're going to do? Respond this and isn't say, about you, Joe. Oh, my God, Joe, don't talk crap on us on social media, dude. Please like, don't. this is where it starts. Your two followers then retweet that, and their 10 followers retweet it, and then their 100 followers. Before you know it, like, literally, like, hundreds of people are now upset with Frontier Airlines. But no, that's, that's dumb. So I didn't do that exactly. <laughs> I did, oh, I did, did go exactly. I did go on Frontier because. We were having trouble getting through to them via email. So I did go on Twitter and say, hey, Frontier, um, just saying, you know, it's my birthday. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I did see that. Just want to know, like, what happened? Like, that's it. I'm not going to say, never flying you again. Uh, You just lost uh, like a. No, I'm not loyal to any airline. It's I'm loyal to Expedia. Like, I'm loyal to the lowest price. Right. 
But so, I will think twice about Frontier because after I did like sort of a deep dive on Twitter, this kind of thing happens a lot to them. Yeah. Well, they're, so they're, like, they, pilots just don't show up for work sometimes. Right. I would have never guessed it. No, no, they, they, <laughs> not, not Frontier. Not Frontier. They blame it on the crew and everything. They do it at such a low rate that if they don't, if they're not going to make money on that flight, that flight's not leaving because tickets are pretty much at cost to a certain level. So if they're not selling out, I think they have to sell out like two thirds of the plane before they start making profit. If they're not making profit, that thing's not taking off. You're not flying. Yeah. It's not like we're American or Delta or something where they just got to screw it. All right, we're going to take a loss on this flight, but it still has to leave. Right. Because it yeah. has three more locations to go to today. The what? moral of the story is fly Delta next time. Yeah. It did work I out. I know American. We found oh, a yeah. flight. Um, you know, they're going to refund all the charges. We found, found another flight on Spirit, another cheap airline. But Spirit, I mean, and yeah, I did make it. I forget what joke I made on Twitter saying, like, it's kind of funny, like, having, like, getting screwed over by frontier and then having spirit save the day. Right. It's like, I I forget what I said, but it's like kind of, I guess if you, if somebody assaulted you in the city and then you were just like called on the homeless to save you. Right. Like it's probably, it's just, I mean, yeah, they're just, it's not probably not going to work out that great. It's not a bad comparison, but it, it did. Um, in this case, uh, the, the homeless, airline in question <laughs> spirit and spirit's great i've never had a bad experience with spirit i did have a bad experience with frontier previously but as we discussed i didn't remember it until a, a friend of mine brought it to my attention they lost my bag for like half a day and that sucked but uh i forgot about it because i don't care they're all the same it's just well so here's how it's gonna go spear was actually gonna cancel that flight too but frontier beat them to the punch so they ended up being able to sell out that plane to fly well, back that, to philadelphia that was an expensive <laughs> flight like we we got a great deal that's why we decided let, let's go to new orleans it's stupid cheap let's do it um then it's just i mean I, i'm guessing our flight costs probably like maybe 50 bucks a pop to, to get back wow but we had to spend like 250 each to to get back on spirit but wh- whatever it's all getting refunded we came back uh to philly saw a phillies game behind the damn net and yeah and you know what surrounded by people complaining really i saw you at that game <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> a friend of cj's and yours apparently and mine on facebook i'm friends with this guy like DJ says, oh yeah, he's at the game, and I'm I'm looking around, and I'm like, yeah, so we're thirty thousand other people. Right. Like, you want me to just like wave and say hi? Oh, I'll just reach back and shake his hand. He's right. No, he literally was right fucking behind. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cr- crazy. He put it. So here's what's nuts is that he posted on Snapchat a video of the fanatic dancing, and like that's when like because you know. Me and my girlfriend were team gritty, so like we can't have any of that. When we when the fanatic starts dancing, we get up and protest and go get some nachos. <laughs> so um, that was like a planned exit. We're getting food, and I would have been in his Snapchat video, except I thought our plan was to go left. We were in the middle of the aisle. Oh uh, yeah, and her plan was to go right. So his video just got her. And by, by the way, she totally ruined his video. Like he had this plan to get like a nice Snapchat video <laughs> of the fanatic and she just ruined it. But I was like r- almost going to be in the photo and that would have been hilarious or in like the video thing because TJ, it's one of those weird things. We're talking during the game and I'm like, uh, yeah, your friend is at the game. Cool. Cool story, bro. Neat. Yeah. But it's weird that it was right freaking there. I forget. Were you here when, when I got my S Preston things over there? You yeah. See? Were you here for that? I don't remember if you were. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember if that was last week or week before. I I like it. Uh, I don't love the. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, the uh, frame job. Yeah, the frame job. I need to work on it. Yeah, I need to work Something on it. Something to bit. ask Santa Claus for for Christmas. <laughs> well, the plan was was I I didn't have the picture with me when I got the frame, and now I I just bought too big of a frame. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna put both of them in here, and see what it looks like. Yeah, I took it for a test drive and I don't like it, so I'm gonna fix that. Yeah, that's it. But it's not fixed yet, obviously. That's like you took it's it just, for a test drive and you wrecked the car. It's still over there, just looking like shit. But I like yeah. it. I like them. It looks cool. I need to fix it. It'll be awesome. 
Now, um, you, now what you got to do is you got to try to get them signed by the Fanatic and Gritty. Yes. That might be tough. That might be tough, but I'm going to figure yeah, that out. So that's enough vacation talk. I'm glad you enjoyed your time. I had a bachelor party in the Poconos, too. And then there was my mom's birthday um, party and all kinds of stuff. It was ridiculousness. A lot of fun. That's awesome. Played golf. Played some golf? Nice. Several times. Well, I wanted to talk. Didn't want to leave out that part. That's the most... That's I mean, this is what the listeners want to hear. <laughs> Played golf several times. My mom had a birthday party. So while you were gone and while in between last week's show and now, the NBA Finals has come to the conclusion that the Toronto Raptors are the world champions. So congrats to them. Uh, it was a good series. I don't know. I don't think... That it would have gone that way had Golden State's power players, the two of them anyway, be completely just taken out of the game to the point where they're probably not even playing next season. I'm talking about KD and Klay Thompson. Um, but Kawhi Leonard just, I mean, the guy's a beast. The guy's a beast. He kept him in way too many of those games this postseason. I don't even think the Raptors would have made the post, uh, the the playoffs without Kawhi this year, personally. Um, that last game, it was all Fred Van Fleet, though. Yo, Fred Van, F- Van Fleet just, I mean, you want to talk about coming up from nothing to, to something? That guy. Uh, he had 22 unbelievable. points. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I believe what you're points. looking for is started from the bottom now. Yeah. 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 yeah like there, that. there you go. Something like I, that. I, I love hip hop. Oh god! I mean, he hit some crucial threes. And it's a Drake line, jeez. And those three free throws that he hit, he sunk all three of them when you know the game yeah. was kind of trending yeah. the other way. All that, and he could be, he could have been concussed from the yeah. hit that he took in what game five or four? I, I don't think remember it was what four. game that was. I think yeah. it was four. But he, he lost smashed. the tooth. <laughs> yeah, he got smashed. All right, wait. Say the guy's name. Say his last name. Fred Van Fleet. Van Fleet. Why? Why did people call it that? Why know. do they pronounce it that way? There's, there's no F. Why is it Van Vliet? It's Van Vliet. Vliet, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Van Vliet. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I, V-L-E-E-T. I only hear anybody say Van Fleet. Maybe that's what I, I'm hearing. That's, I feel like that's all I hear, too. And I feel like that's a real last name. Van Vliet feels like it's made up. somebody yeah, it's made, like, up. <laughs> made a mistake. Like my old, uh, not bumper sticker. What what did I get? Re- replaced, CJ, my... Uh, the thing on the back of your car with the numbers and license letters. plate. License plate. Sometimes you have a mental block. Me more than most. Um, my they had one letter wrong for the longest time, and I only realized. Well, I probably shouldn't give too much information because no. uh, I'll get in trouble <laughs> with the authorities. But I just it wasn't my mistake. Somebody wrote it down wrong, and then boom, a letter gets changed. Bada bing, bada boom. Van Vliet does not exist. <laughs> There's never been a Van Vliet. That was a mistake. It, it's supposed to be Van Fleet, and I don't know. Yeah. I'm just that's what I'm saying. That's all that makes sense. Weird. Yeah. Let me um, ask you guys a question because there wasn't a single person on this show that thought that this was going to happen. We all said Warriors in 6 right. or 7, right? And or 5 or 6. Yeah, I, think. I said 5. I don't even think any of us said 7. I think we we all said Reby 5. Or said 6. six but I said Golden five. State. I said 5. Yeah. How did we get that this wrong? There's a couple possible explanations and maybe it could be all of them well we didn't foresee you know durant coming right. in and then having to go out with a you know re-aggravating that injury and we also didn't see you know clay thompson blowing his acl out we didn't right. you know those are factors you don't plan for but had it not been for that I, i'm pretty sure golden state would have pulled that off i think so too uh, yeah if clay doesn't get hurt that game i mean golden state you know if you're putting money on it in vegas odds are they probably win that game Right. And it's down to a game seven, which could go either way. And, um, you know, we talked about it. It's just, I think it was a combination of guys being tired, been playing for the championship every damn year. And you get used to playing a certain way. When you have Kevin Durant, you play a very specific way. When right. you remove him, you have to play a very different specific way. He looked so good in that first quarter when he came back in game five. He looked so good. For being out for as long as he was and uh, being under the pressure that he was under to, to, to perform in that game. 
He looked so good in the first quarter, and it's a damn shame. It's Oddly a damn enough, shame what happened to him. I always thought that KD kind of slowed them down because of the ISO plays. Right. You know, obviously he's a great yeah. player, but. Yeah, and you can only do so much. I remember when I was a kid and I would buy like NBA Live 95 and I would put all the best players on the team, like not even worried about point guard. It'd be like Shaq, Patrick Ewing, right, uh, right. Charles Barkley. And then it's, you can only, I would only score with like my favorite player. It's kind of pointless, right. like loading it up with, at the end of the game, Hakeem Olajuwon would have two points. Right. Like, what's the point? Like, you right. could have too many guys. You got to fo- focus on one or two guys. And that's the thing everybody's saying is the um, three headed monster thing. Is that going away? Do you need three guys? And I think this whole season has proved that you don't. Right. And we've already moved past that. It's about having Toronto two. has definitely proven that. And then you building a two. team around them. And you need, right. Yeah. And you need to have a strong bench. Yep. And yep. role players, obviously. Yeah. My next, my next question would be, aside from the injuries with Golden State, could it be that Kawhi Leonard is just that good? He's, he's got two championships. LeBron only has three. Um, I, I say only like it's no big accomplishment. I'm not. I don't mean it like that. I just mean that like in a in comparison, he's he's creeping up on on the guy that everybody says is the greatest. He's great, but you got to figure outside of that lucky shot against the Sixers. And I know it's going to sound like sour grapes, but you know that goes into overtime, and then who knows? You know, maybe maybe they're not in play for the finals. Right. I think right. like this happens all the time. I remember when the Mavericks won the talk about Dirk Nowitzki, my dad, and like we, we had an argument saying, like, well, there you have it, Dirk Nowitzki, top ten player of all time. Now, are we still having that conversation now? I don't think so. No. I, Maybe I'm putting not. him in the top twenty, but he was he was saying, Tell me he's not a top ten player, because in the moment, that's what how you feel. But one year ago, would you put no 10- one was sure Kawhi Leonard had I mean, we knew he had something left, but we didn't know if he was too selfish, if he was a team guy, if um, maybe there was more to why he was sitting out. We didn't know what he had left in the tank. So one year, he wins a championship, fine, but all it took was one year for people to write him off before. Right. So, I I mean, it needs to be a much bigger body of work. I feel like the NBA, it's all about how many championships you have when you're entering the realm of, like, the top 20 or even the top 10, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's just, uh, by that rationale, would you put Tim Duncan in the top 10? And that's the thing, like when he retired, I think everybody probably would. Yeah. Now everybody's forgotten about Tim Duncan. Right. Like you just mentioned Tim Duncan. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, he was a guy. Dude, he he was was really good. He was the man. He did things. He was like one of the top two players of his generation. Right. But nobody, nobody's, you just get forgotten after a while. So Kawhi right. is going to be the same way. There's no comparison between Kawhi and LeBron. The championship totals are similar, but LeBron's obviously had a much, much better career. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, uh, I just, I just find it all interesting because you, you think about it, you look at, you look at the, the, the moves that are already happening in the NBA free agency, as far as the Lakers, getting Anthony Davis. We've been talking about this for a while. It's been on everybody's mind that's an NBA fan, and it finally took place. Um, the Pelicans got Lonzo Ball, uh, Ingram, four draft picks, w- one or two of them in the first round. I think three of them. Three of them? Yeah. Um, Josh Hart, the, I think the Philly fourth guy. overall, I think. Right. Fourth overall. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if the Pelicans won this trade or not, but point blank period, they're getting some really good young talent, uh, this Thursday in the draft, you know what I mean? And I don't know anything can happen, but you look at the Lakers and they have $23 million in cap space. They're not going to get Kawhi. Where, where you, where do you think Kawhi is going to end up? Clippers. Clippers. I've been saying Clippers. I think Clippers. Yeah, or, I mean, Toronto, I guess it would be one of those two. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he's going to stay in the East. 
I don't. I don't. If he does, it'll be Toronto, in my opinion. I don't obviously know Kawhi, but I just feel like, and it, it quite frankly, it surprises me that he wants to go to L.A. He doesn't seem like the L.A. guy to me. He's not flashy. He's not out in the open. He's not very talkative whatsoever. He's not self-centered or self He doesn't self-absorbed. like getting interviewed? No, he doesn't like any of that shit. So he doesn't strike me as an L.A. guy. But that's what L.A. is all about. Like, they're And that's not- also where he's from, too, right? I think he's from that direction anyway. Well, he I went think. to college at San Diego State. Okay. I mean, LA I is way that. more laid back than New York is. People forget the whole New York deal with oh, basketball for sure. because the Knicks have been horrible forever. Right. So it's more laid back, and then you go to the the Clippers, and they're way more laid back than the Lakers. So it's, I mean, that's it's not a bad place to be. to be. Blake Griffin and Chris Paul couldn't get it done for years, and who really cared? Right. Well, everybody's like, he wants to go to LA, but he, they never say. Where in LA? There's two teams there. I mean, I've heard Lakers, and I've heard that Lakers are going to try to get him this off season. But what are the Lakers going to do? They can't offer him a max contract unless they cut most of their team. And then what? You're just going to NBA jam people to death? Two, two, three players out on the floor? They can't. Like that's not happening. Yeah, you have to field a team. Yeah, you know. So like, I I don't see how the Lakers are going to land. Kawhi Leonard. Quite frankly, I don't see how the Lakers are going to do anything. Like, there's nothing else they can do but just like fill a couple spots with just role players, bench players. I don't, I don't see what else they can do. Draft, obviously, but they just shipped off a bunch of their draft picks. And and the crazy thing is, is that people are put. Vegas has the Lakers at, at odds to win the finals this coming year. All yeah, right. I don't get that. Just because of the, the the Anthony Davis trade. Are you nuts? I'll take that bet every day. Yeah. I mean, Wait, you won't. saw what happened with Golden State. Right. I think they're banking on the fact that the Lakers aren't going to be, in the end, they're not going to be what they are right now. They're going to add a piece or two, and they're going to be a different team. So they, they're, they're also playing the odds, obviously, being Vegas, that the Lakers, as they're currently constituted, are going to get better still. And if they do, if they get somebody else, I don't know, twenty three million. That's probably out of the you know the Harrison Barnes territory. But um, you know somebody, you know three and D kind of guy. Uh, Kyrie's not going there. You know what I mean? Kyrie's not going to go there. I don't. I don't see. I don't see. Like I already said, Kawhi. I don't even see Jimmy Butler enti- enticed by that. I don't see that happening. I could see Jimmy Butler after an entire career of kind of mediocrity and, you know, he experienced success in Philly, in Philly but also it was, you know, a high pressure situation. Um, you know, the media is rough out here. Um, I could see him kind of embracing that third wheel kind of deal and seeing how like, I mean, look at, you know, Andre Iguodala. People are talking about, is he a Hall of Famer, which is a complete joke. He gets to be the sixth wheel on a, a championship run and he gets to be in the Hall of Fame right uh category or conversation. So that could be Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler might be looking at his career and saying, this is what I'm missing. It's like I don't I don't want to make a comparison to Survivor on C- CBS. Great game, you know, our fourth uh favorite and greatest American sport. But when you're trying to win Survivor at the end of the game you can't just be the last one standing or one of the last ones sta- standing. You got to build a resume. You got to prove that you have outwitted, outlasted, and, and you know whatever the other out one is. It's been a while since the season ended. Um, you g- got to put together a resume. You got to knock some people off. You got to do some blind sides. You got to do some work. Jimmy Butler right now, his career one dimensional. He's got to put together a resume, championships, even if it means he's the third, fourth, or fifth wheel whatever it takes to get it done. I can dig that. Even if that means, quote unquote, only making $23 million a year. Let me tell you something else. The West is going to look different next year. It, it is. Uh, because apparently, of global warming? or Apparently, like- well, yeah, of course. But if, uh, apparently, uh, uh, Chris Paul wants out of Houston. Him and James Harden aren't getting along. I don't know how real that is. I'm seeing it different places. Actually, can we tackle this? Because I was looking up um, the... Uh, their beat writer, Jonathan Fagan, on Twitter, he's, I mean, he just fired up a bunch of tweets in the last two hours. Um, we record this on Tuesday. 
Um, you know, this is a guy that spends a lot of time with the team. This is like probably their number one guy out there in Houston. And he's saying, you know, he talked to the GM, Daryl Morey, and he's saying it's all bullshit. Uh, he's talked to both guys, both he's FaceTime, both them together, um, in the off season so far to talk about every single free agent available that they might target. And uh, when they're on chartered team planes, Harden and Paul sit together. They play cards. I mean, this, there was talk that they hadn't talked the last two months of the season. They're sitting together on the plane playing cards. Right, right. So. I, I don't mean, know where it's coming from. I've seen, I've seen stuff like that. I've also seen, obviously, the opposite. Um, Chris Paul, I'm not, I'm not a Chris Paul guy. There's a lot of guys that don't like, like Chris Paul. Yeah, I feel like he's not a likable guy. I'm looking at his stats, though, and I'm wondering if this is like some super Jedi mind trick stuff from the Houston GM himself, from Maury. I mean, th- I'm, I'm looking at, at, at his stats. Chris Paul is going to be 34 years old next year. Yeah. And he had the lowest points per game since maybe his you know second year in the league. I mean, all of his numbers are dropping. Yeah. And he's turning 34. And he's constantly injured. And you can see, like, he doesn't have, like, he's not a super athletic guy. He's not like, you know, Steve Nash, I kind of felt, could stick around a little bit later. He had a lot of success, you know, up until he was almost, you know, 40 years old. He was a very athletic dude. Chris Paul is kind of pudgy. He's, I mean. He's kind of built like Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He is. And I don't see either of those guys having success in their late 30s. So what do you... I mean, now would be the time to unload Paul. Yeah, I agree. There was a lot of rumors like Chris Paul for Ben Simmons. It's like, yeah, no, why? Why would no. the Sixers do that? That sounds insane. We're but, t- like, that would be like trading for Chris Webber when the Sixers did, uh, right, right? You With know, Billy King over a decade ago. <laughs> right. that, that's what I think you're kind of getting from Chris Paul. You're going to get a year and a half from Chris Paul, and then it's it's over. Right. Well, look at it this way. So you're um, looking at news that's coming from the GM. The GM is not going to admit their problems. Because he is probably looking to unload. So are you going to take someone on your team that's not a team player? No. 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 The guy's well, that, that's what you were saying about the Jedi mind tricks. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's everything you've ever heard. Because then the story always comes out that that person really is that much of an asshole. Right. But, but it'll be their asshole. Yeah. It'll be <laughs> someone else's asshole. The GM is not going to admit there's any problems going on on his team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a possibility because I can't figure out where else it would be coming from unless it's just a total lie. But where do these things originate? I don't. It's and it's always an anonymous source. In truth, yeah, maybe. I mean, I it, the whole the whole situation is crazy. The West is about to get shaken up. I uh, the other thing that's going to uh, change the the landscape of the West next season is obviously uh, KD and Clay Thompson not playing. Obviously, I, they're both – certainly KD is going to be a, a a free agent, but they're also talking about Golden State giving him a contract, a huge mega contract that whether he could just opt out whenever, uh, most likely just to take care of him while he's injured um, because I assume that they feel some sort of responsibility for that. But um, either way, either way you slice it, they're not playing next year. So Golden State is going to be a lot different than they were, in, have been in the past. Both him and KD season. cost themselves a lot of money with those injuries, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have Ryan Spader on the line. Uh, you've heard Ryan Spader on this show many, many times. He's been on MLB Network. He's also uh, co-author with Kevin Reevy on Incredible Baseball Stats. Um, we're going to play the... the uh, uh, the Spader game. Spader game. I already have my pick. Do you have your pick? Already figured out? Already figured out. I got a guy in mind. Good. So we're going to take And a also, break. at some point, I want to talk about a trash article on ESPN.com today. Oh. Relating to the NBA draft. So when we come back, we'll talk about that as well. Okay, excellent. We'll be right back after this. 
So you've been listening to the Might Be News Network, but you still can't get enough each week? Become our patron on Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash MBN Network to become a patron and get exclusive content now. For as little as $5 per month, you'll get access to extended episodes of all your favorite shows, as well as perks including MBN merch and monthly giveaways. Just want to support the network? Become a patron for as much or as little as you'd like. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Two hours of bonus content each week guaranteed. Your contributions will help make the Might Be News Network bigger and better than ever before. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Welcome back to Might Be Sports. Everybody's here. As well as on the line, we have Ryan Spader, the legendary Ryan Spader. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? You got to get out of here with that legendary crap. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, let me just tell you right now that your profile picture on Facebook, that is legendary, my friend. You're on on MLB Network. You're living your dream. That is legendary, dude. I'm so I'm well, so dream, happy for you. My dream was to uh, actually play on the field, so I kind of dropped the ball on that one. But uh, I, I guess I'll take what I can get. Shit, I mean, you're still very much associated with the game that you like, that you love so much, and uh, that's that's something to that's that's marvelous, dude. Marvelous. That's the big leagues. Was there a moment where you were really nervous up there? You were on like just to give some background. You were on. Uh, I don't remember the exact show, MLB Network. You were on there for an hour. They did the uh, the one on one interview. You were, you were on the panel. You did the whole shebang. Was there a moment you were super nervous? Uh, was I nervous? Yeah. Like was there was there any moment where you were more nervous that like you're like oh shit this is real? Well, truthfully, like I, I kind of went into it a little bit. I don't know if I was confident or cocky because like. At this point, I've done enough radio and enough TV, even uh, just generally not in studio. I do a lot of Skype stuff and, and then solo studio stuff. But I was like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be nervous at all. But then all of a sudden, you know, I'm sitting on a panel with Jason Stark, Frank Charles, Joe Girardi, and I'm staring at like 40 people who are in their production crew, and there's like 15 cameras. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> There's no way to prepare for that. That's yeah, crazy. and so fortunately, um, I kind of get over it quickly because Brand pulled out and like you know I'm here with Jason Stark, Joe Girardi, and our uh, new pal Ryan Spader. He had this really cool um, uh, little intro for me. He said like you know started out just on Twitter. People probably didn't take that very seriously, but but they now they're taking it very seriously, aren't they? And I uh, I said to him. Um, uh, well, I'm here, aren't I? And got a laugh out of it. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, it, it, it just it, it just really meshed really well from there. That's great, man. I'm really happy. To Although hear. I will say, I will say, I did uh, nearly interrupt Joe Girardi, and uh, that would have been a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great, though. What were you going to interrupt him for? I, I, it was something on the Phillies and and Braves, and I was just so eager to inject my uh, supposed knowledge. And um, I got out like a word or two, and then he continued with this a lot. I let it go. And Fran was just super professional. He was really good, good at being like, Ryan, I could tell you're chomping at the dip to get get in on this. What do you got? And uh, it, it, it still, it, it played smoothly. That's really great, man. It was fun to watch. You did a great job. Remember, you, you texted me when it was all done, and you said, all right, you got to give me some constructive criticism because everybody's saying I did a great job, and I need to know the truth. <laughs> and it's just... Holy shit, you did a, I mean, you saved your best for the biggest stage. You did a really great job on there. And I think, I mean, I assume you're going to be invited back. Did they have you on the docket any, for any other yeah. spot later on? They, they, right away, they, he said, you got to let them know when you can come back. Uh, we got to have you back on. Uh, they, they, one producer was like, I couldn't have gone any better for the first go round. We got to get you back. Brian Kenny wants to uh, be on with you. And then he texted me again on Monday and was like, hey, um, Brian wanted me to reach out to you again, see, see when we'll be able to come back. Uh, we really want to get you back on the show. That's incredible. Awesome. That's incredible. Success story. Congratulations, man. Yeah, well, 
well, thanks. Congratulations to you, too. I wouldn't have been there if I didn't write two books uh, that were um, co-authored by uh, Levin Keevy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's my porn name. <laughs> now, actually, you know what's crazy? They say, like, your, your porn name is your first pet and the street you grew up on. Mine's the best. Harry Pine. <laughs> That's a great porn name. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm the king of non sequiturs, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, you got any? Um, we're going to play the Spader game, um, which is, you know, we're going to throw a name out, out at you. You're not prepared for this at all. You know, you're allowed to look it up on the internet, but basically, as fast as you possibly can or off the top of your head, any stat or fact or anything on this player. So we each got one in mind, but do you have anything um, that you threw out there on Twitter this week that you're kind of proud of? Any like interesting stat or anything? Um, so the one thing that came across that was really interesting, and I was fortunate enough to be able to talk about it on a, on MLB Network, you know, where I'm a regular now, kind of a big deal. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're <laughs> was, a pro. Um, was uh, the Chris Sale thing I came across. And for me, the, the Red Sox are not getting it done for Chris Sale because um, I don't want to mess up the numbers on you, so let me make sure I pull it up exactly. But... Um, since joining the Red Sox, he's pitched in 73 games, started 73 games. He's won 31 of them. This is what it's taken for him to win a game. A 1.65 ERA, a 0.804 whip, and 13.6 strikeouts per nine innings. And then the other 42 games that he hasn't won, he's over 19 with a 3.65 ERA, a 1.036 whip, and almost 13 strikeouts per nine. It's ridiculous. There's no way that he should be losing those types of games. Uh, and his record, this is just goes even further into the kill the win thing, uh, doesn't really reflect uh, what he's been doing with the, with the uh, Red Sox. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It almost feels like he was more heralded when he was with uh, the White Sox, which doesn't make any sense because he's on a bigger stage right now. Um, I, I don't know if it's his personality or whatever, but um, people don't talk about him in the same light as Clayton Kershaw. Um, you know, it's, it's it's just weird when I think of Chris Sale. Like even I'll, I'll look at the stats, and you know what you just said, it makes sense. He's killing it right now, but in my mind, I feel like he was better with the White Sox. No, absolutely weird. not better with the White Sox. Right, uh, he's been phenomenal. Um, and then I got one more for you. I don't know if you, you guys caught this, but um, on the fourteenth, Indians Jake Bowers had a cycle, and the day prior, Shohei Otani had a cycle. And that was just the um, third time in baseball history that players had cycles on back-to-back days. The other two, June 9th and 10th, 1912, Chris Speaker and Chief Myers. And then June 12th and June 13th, 1885, Dave Orr and George Wood. So it hasn't happened uh, all that often. And never, do, or the, for the first time during the live ball era. But what really drives me nuts is if you look at the dates there, it's, it's all June. It's June 9th, 10th, 12th, 13th, and 13th, 14th. And, Kev, you know me well enough that I'm OCD as hell, and it really drives me nuts that they skipped 11 and uh, <laughs> doubled up on 13. <laughs> that's crazy. But it's so weird that it worked out that way. But that's why, you know, these incredible baseball stats and more at uh, theacespader.com. Check out the new incredible baseball stats written by myself and Ryan. Um, but let's get to the game. Um, you know, who wants to go first? All right. I'm, I was tasked with giving you, it, it's, it's unfair. I don't think you're going to, um, <laughs> you're going to have anything crazy, but you, you might, I was going to go. Andrew wanted me to say Amari Telemaco, but I'm not going to do, do that. I'm going to say, uh, Vicente Padilla and people love to call him Vincente Padilla, but we're going to go Vicente Padilla. You have anything off the top of your head, or that you can quickly look up for Vicente Padilla, former well, Philly. So I'll, I'll give you, a, a, let me give you a list because uh, that, that's the best way because he didn't really, he didn't have a bad career, uh, but uh, he didn't really have all that shining of a career. And uh, I'll give you the most recent series pitches to a lot, at least five homers in a game because Jared Eichhoff did it just a week ago on June 10th. Uh, Prior to Eichhoff, you got Dustin McGowan, who was, uh, for the most part, a Blue Jay on June 16th, 2015. Prior to him, 
the Akoi Lotto, who is unfortunately no longer with us, uh, July 25th, 2005, and then prior to Lotto, uh, it happened just a couple months prior, April 19th, 2005, the same paper deal. There you have it. Hmm. Not too shabby. It all comes back around. Baseball's a crazy sport. Andrew, who you got? Uh, let's go with Juan Encarnacion. You guys are really being dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be, the next two are going to be easier. Juan Encarnacion, not to be confused with Edwin Encarnacion. Juan Encarnacion, he was, I believe, um, he was a red, a brave, maybe. Uh, Marlin. He was a Marlin. Uh, I know he was, <laughs> he definitely started, he started out with the uh, Tigers. And he, he showed right. some promise uh, but um, I think in '98 he was only 22 or something. And he had, yeah, here it is. Here. In '98 he was only 22. Had a uh, OPS plus that was 34 percent above league average. But he went from uh, Detroit to Cincinnati to Florida uh, to LA to back to Florida. And um, on Encarnacion, I, I don't know. Like, there's <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> hey man, that's not bad at all. You still the got it. He got it. The most fascinating thing I could get to you on him is um he the, some of the names that he was traded for throughout his career. You got guys Dimitri Young, who had a brother, of course, who played in um, Delman Young in the majors. Wilton Guerrero, he was traded with to the Marlins. He, of course, was Vladdy's brother for uh, Ryan Dunster. And then he was uh, dealt in a deal from the Dodgers to with uh, Paul Luzuka and Guillermo Moda for um, he Sob Choi and Bill Murphy, who never amounted to much, and, and Brad Penny. And then uh, just one last thing on him, he made $33,128,000 in his career. So uh, I'm sure he sailed off to the sun, into the sunset and uh, is living out his days uh, sipping on um, whatever the hell they sip on in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice, man. C- All right. CJ, you got one? C- CJ got one. might be an asshole, too. I don't know. Kurt Russell. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he had a really good minor league career, right? I mean, I, I know you don't, I don't have the, like, the numbers right in front of you, but he was a really good minor league baseball player. He was going to be... Yeah. I mean, his, his numbers are phenomenal. He was yeah, going to be a great player. I think he broke got his injured, yeah. yeah. He was a kid what from L.A. What's that? It's Kurt what Russell, the, the actor. Thing? Oh, did he really? I did, I didn't you you that. knew that. Nah, you guys got me. That's you didn't know I Kurt Russell did. played? Wow, oh, CJ. Wow. CJ is... Uh, yeah, is... do yourself a favor. Tweet something about that tonight. Kurt Russell, his minor yeah, league I'm, stats. I'm pulling this up now. When, when you <laughs> look right. at these stats, this is this was a Chase Utley in the making. Wow. And um, Now, I mean, Kev, I think you're blowing it up a little bit. He was a... He only he had two, one like, year. Two career hitter in the minors, but he only played 110 games. Yeah, he only had like one year, but it was a pretty uh, phenomenal year for what it was. It was a partial year here, he got here, hurt. Here you go. I'll give you this. In, um, uh, he played six double-A games in his entire uh, minor league career. And in those games, he batted 563, 588, 938. That's maybe so what I'm th- thinking was, was, was the uh, double-A start. Better. Right. So, all right. Taylor, he's going to be like, uh, Babe Root. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Doc I Ellis. Do. I could do. Doc Taylor? Ellis. Doc well, Ellis. What do you expect, honestly? Do you, do you really think it can be anything but, here, I'm, I'm going to screw this. I'm not going to give you the, the um, you're going to throw me a softball here. with his, Was it the uh, uh, no-hitter on LSD? Well, yeah, I right. feel like a lot of people don't know yeah. about that. Yeah. A lot. Well, so not was casual team. baseball fans wouldn't know about that, I should say. So, but what well, else June is interesting 12. about him? June, well, no, I'm, I'm going with this because it, it's fascinating to me. June 12, 1970, Doc Ellis threw a no-hitter, and uh, he didn't realize that he was supposed to pitch the day, um, that day, and he actually uh, got high on LSD the, the day prior, um, and he was still uh, messed up from it that, that day. And the thing that's most fascinating to me about Doc Ellis is his name can be written like if, you know, he was in school. It would be Ellis, comma, D. Ellis, D. <laughs> that's oh, crazy. wow. That's awesome. That's crazy. 
Um, well, my first choice was going to be Cliff Lee. Do you have anything for Cliff Lee? He's just like one of my favorite. Oh yeah, Cliff today. Lee. I, I'm going to have to give you a couple on Cliff Lee because he's got some of my favorite stats of all time, including my very first uh, incredible baseball stat. So, oh. quote unquote, my very first tweet was a Cliff Lee tweet, and it was um, Cliff Lee. And I got this one by heart. Uh, he went he went six and nine in 2012, and Philly was running around with their heads cut off as we tend to do. Uh, because Cliff Lee's career is over, right? You know, he went six and nine. Right? But I remember I used to call into like Glenn Mack now and Ray Didinger and these guys who I do radio with all the time now, and they freaking hang up on me because I started wanting to talk numbers. And unless that's your purpose for calling in, they don't really want to talk numbers with you. And um, Cliff Lee uh, had in 2012 became the first pitcher with at least 200 strikeouts and fewer than 30 walks since Cy Young in 1905. And then he's got one more that I really like, uh, that I pretty sure Kev, you, you'll, you'll, you may know, uh, that this is, uh, in the book. Uh, and that's in 2011, Cliff Lee had 238 strikeouts without throwing a single wall pitch which is a uh, major league oddity record. That's crazy. And it's one of the coolest things I've ever, I've ever um, come across. And then, uh, believe it or not, on that, on that list, uh, if you go down the list of who is the most strikeouts without a wild pitch, you got Jose Rio, who was um, 227, is, very, is the next pitcher, and then Cole Hamels, 2008 after that. But Rio is one of the more interesting um, pitchers of all time, in my opinion, because he was voted off the Hall of Fame ballot on two separate occasions because he uh, finished in 1995 and then didn't play with an injury for five seasons and then came back in 2001. And then, um, so he appeared on the Hall of Fame ballot in, um, what was it, in 2001, but then he played and he, he actually got a vote. But then he appeared back on the Hall of Fame ballot in 2008. Uh, didn't get any votes that time, though. Yeah, I was wondering if you stayed on the ballot if you were off and then came back to the game. So if you come back, you're now off the ballot for, for the. Uh... No, no, no. If you he was off the ballot, not because he came back, uh, so he wouldn't be off, but because he didn't get enough votes to stay on. Oh, got it. Okay, that's cool. So, like for instance, there was talk when Roger Clemens was around, like his 49th or 50th birthday. He was talking about coming back and pitching the inning so that he could reset his time on the ballot. Nice. Which he obviously never did. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, and that's I, that's what you do best. You do the Hall of Fame stuff, and you know you, you help Tim Raines get in, and then Edgar Martinez coming up next month. Um, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, we really appreciate you being yeah, on the show, Ryan. No, guys, I I, I really uh, love doing this stuff. I appreciate you having me, and uh, Kev, make sure you brag about um what we got going on uh, for that Hall of Fame. Damn right going to be a busy month of july for us awesome be a lot of fun a lot of beers a lot of good times good okay one more thing for you i guess he's, i guess who is hanging out with us when we go to the hall who's that connor biggio caven's brother and craig's um, oh really craig's son oh that's so awesome. he was a second baseman for he was second baseman for notre dame and um, just to, because I bring up the Biggios, I gotta I gotta share one more fun fact with you. That I, I mean, you know, I mean, night. Craig Craig Biggio is one of my three favorite players of all time. I love that guy. Yeah. Well, make sure you don't gush and make me look like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, but, oh, it's uh, on. That's a really strong handshake, man. You think <laughs> like you get that from your dad? <laughs> <laughs> on on um on Biggio, uh, the Biggio family, Caden. So we'll start with Craig. Craig Biggio had one multi-homer game in his first five seasons. Caden has two multi-homer games in his first four weeks. That's pretty awesome. Wow. I saw you, you, yeah. you tweet that out. I didn't even know I didn't know his son was playing. I looked him up and uh bright future ahead for him. We shall see. Yeah. Craig Craig Biggio, uh, un, very unheralded guy. But what, for some reason I was just a fan of Astros when I was a kid. Diehard Phillies fan, but I love Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, and Owen yeah. Ryan. Weird. Wow. Jeff Bagwell, infamous man who ended Kevin Ruby's uh, that damn uh, batting career. Stance. 
I was one of those dumbass kids who like crouched like they're sitting on an imaginary chair up at the plate thinking I'm like a big <laughs> leaguer. What an idiot. Well, thank you so much for being on with us, Ryan. All right. I appreciate you guys having me. Take it easy. See you, man. See you. So we have about 10 minutes left with our regular listeners. And do we want to do uh, go to the week or do we want to talk Women's World Cup real quick and save um, uh, rapid fire for the Patreon? Does that work for you? Yeah, I do have to rant on this art, this oh. trash ESPN article real quick. Do you want to do that on this part or the yes. Patreon part? I okay, think I can it. tie it into a like a nice tight five minutes. Okay. All right. So this is an article. I got it all on my notes. I, I nice. did some major show prep for this. Nice. Um, this guy, Kevin Arnovitz, um, got like a hundred times more followers than me on Twitter. Apparently, he's a big deal. I've never heard of him, but um, all Kevin's got to stick together. So I respect the guy, but this article's trash. It's called Let Zion Williamson Choose Where He Wants to Play Next. The whole article is about uh, there should be no NBA draft. Which, by the by the way, NBA draft tomorrow, Thursday, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, yeah, but it's basically what he's proposing is get rid of like the whole tanking thing by just letting everyone be free agents. And we've talked about this before about how um, you know players are getting too much power, and it's um, yeah we we talk all the time about how you know fans are fans of teams. They don't like to say they're fans of the owners or the GM or any of that, but indirectly they are. They're fans of the teams, not the players. You know, players have a shelf life. The team doesn't really. The team's going to be around. If the team dies, you know, that's obviously um, a situation unto itself. But this is one of the scenarios where that could be that could happen. If you allow players to, right out of college, choose where they want to go, you you have a big problem on your hands because what is in every sport? What do you want to do? You want to build from the ground up. You don't necessarily want to go through free agency. Ideally, I mean that's how the 2008 Phillies won the World Series. That's how uh, the Eagles won. You know they added some pieces when they won uh, the Super Bowl. Every team adds pieces, but you have to build from the ground up. So imagine if every year the Lakers, uh, the Knicks, the, the Knicks would have been out of their situation in two years if they could have just shopped around, just gotten one of the top few picks of the draft. So it makes a few few points. I'll tie this up real quick. Um, You know, this is all based on like uh, conspiracy theories and people thinking the grass is always greener. Everyone loves the idea of shaking things up. They don't think about why it's the way it is in the first place. Every sport, for the most part, every major North American sport has a draft for a reason. It works. It makes sense. He makes this weird argument where he says, now, um, and I quote, would the Lakers be assured a top three talent every year by virtue of being the Lakers? Who knows? So he's saying, would the Lakers be assured they would be able to sign a top three talent that would normally be in the draft every year? Well, yes. But here he says, who knows? His whole article is being pretty sure of himself that a free agency system would, would work. But the flaw, that's when he says, well, who knows? Right. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Lakers would be able to. Now you're giving, not only do the Lakers have the power to sign anyone that they want, they can trade for anyone that that they want. Right. Now, the guys coming out of college, they can sign any of those guys they want. How do they fail? There'd be no way for them to fail. So, it's a dumb system. And, you know, just to be petty... He, uh, he makes one argument where he says, typically, arranged marriages don't produce the happiest unions. And I have a problem with that. Because according to Pamela Regan, PhD, not sure where, uh, from what college or whatever, um, from Psychology t- Today and also in the Psychological Reports Journal, says that there is no scientific evidence that arranged marriages or love-based marriages produce any unhappy results from the other. <laughs> so this is whole thing of saying typically arranged marriages don't produce the happiest unions. That's bullshit. He's a liar. You're a liar, Kevin Arnovitz. Look at look at Kobe Bryant. Look at look at Michael Jordan. Look at I mean Russell Westbrook. There's plenty of there's plenty of examples. Plenty. Yeah, this is uh it's dumb. I I, I don't like it. He says, you know, it's uh it should be teams competing for these players. If you, if you do it that do it that way, 
there's going to be teams that just can't survive. The Milwaukee Bucks of the world, they're going to have to get lucky by signing guys that nobody thought was good out of college. They get right. l- lucky with the Draymond Greens. Yeah, it's a, it's, and it wouldn't work. So it's a dumb... Everybody wants to change things. They think it, nothing's ever perfect. Yeah, that's dumb. This new system would be even less perfect. So just keep it the way it is. Stop it. Everybody wants to shake things up for no reason. I don't like it. I want to talk quickly about the Women's World Cup right now. Um, the, the women's team... U.S. team, absolutely killing it. They're playing Sweden next. That's going to be a tough game for them. Have you guys watched any of it? Do you guys watch any of the Women's World Cup? Mm -hmm. I used to in the past, but now it just seems like a foregone conclusion. I don't know. if Maybe I'll watch it towards the end. It's one thing that that always gets me about it um, is the staggering uh, difference between talent for the U.S. women's team versus the U.S. men's team. And and the the obvious pay gap, which in my opinion should be much shortened, in my opinion. Um, but also that the they don't it's play. Pretty dumb opinion, by the way. Just say I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. We're gonna get into it on Patreon, I guess. But yeah. like, I I think that like, I mean, we've we've talked about this this issue not necessarily with this sport in particular. Um, we've mentioned it more so with the uh, WNBA, right? Is the one we talked about. We have talked about that. Um, I think that this is this is different to me uh, because, like you said, it's a foregone conclusion that the women, that the U.S. women's team is at least going to be in the finals. Basically, um, I think these ladies deserve bigger paychecks for sure, for sure. And I think that um, I, I mean it's it's. It's a better product to me than WNBA. Now, I can't say the same for the Major League Women's Soccer, right? Because I never, ever see that. Ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, it's why. Because you're watching a once every four years event. I'm talking about their and their, their, their their professional level. Uh, not like the global World World Cup level. I'm talking about like they have a, they have to have a league. They have a league. Um, right. You know what I mean? Yeah they, yeah, they do. And I just, I never see anything with it. And that's a shame to me because these ladies are fucking, all of them, even the, even the girls not on USA or whatever, like they're, they're all just as good to me. Soccer, soccer isn't like tennis or basketball to me. Like these ladies are playing as hard as the men are. Um, it's not as fast. Obviously you can say that, but some people would argue that, but the pay gap to me, at least for w- the world cup level that needs to get closed up by by Team USA, in my opinion, because they are that good. They are. Um, but I want to I want to do go to the week real quick before we get out of here for Patreons. Here we go. Fight Me Sports presents the greatest of all time. Of the week, my go to the week is a soccer player, not for Team USA. Uh, Her name is Marta Vieira da Silva, and uh, she just broke the record for most goals scored in a World Cup. That's for men and women. She's she's the number one. Uh, It was her 17th World Cup goal. She scored it today as we're recording it. She scored it on uh, Tuesday. And uh, that is the new record for outright top score, both men's and women's. Uh, she took over Germany, Germany's uh, Miroslav Close, who was the previous record holder. Uh, she scored a penalty kick today, which made her the new leader of scoring in World Cup history. So, uh, Marta Vieira da Silva, that's my go to the week. That's a lock. That's a lock. She's locked for my go of the week. You're locked. You're locking it in. So is she in the running now for uh, go to the year? I mean, yeah, I would say so. Okay. Uh, that's a that's a big deal. I mean, a lot of the, the, not just women's like that's that's worldwide gender gender non specific. And one hour ago, <laughs> you, you didn't even know her last. name. I had no idea what her last name was. <laughs> I had no idea. They only mentioned her by Marta. I don't know why they just talked about her like. Like whoever wrote the article knows her personally. She's that big. No respect. I mean, that is. Well, I mean, it's it's the ultimate respect. I mean, <laughs> true, true. I suppose you're right. Share. 
<laughs> Seal, sting. So, uh, what do you got? Um, Andrew, you go next because I still want to tighten mine up. I'm going to go with uh, Deshaun Jackson. You know, he held his football camp in North Philly for free, gave out food in Kensington to homeless people. You know, he he was really good friends with Nipsey Hussle, yep. and that really hit home with him. So he's trying to get back to the community and, you know, and impact, the, impact him in a big way, and he's already off to a good start. I saw he's got uh, – he took a picture with Carson Wentz. Uh, they were drinking Hennessy. Yeah. I was cracking up. I was cracking up. Yeah, Alshon, Nelson, pick. yeah. Yeah, it's a good pick. All right, I'm going to go with um, – you see, whenever I try to think of these um, greatest – maybe it says, like, what's going on in my head. I can't think of the positive. I always think of who I hate this week. <laughs> maybe, that's your, maybe that's your, uh, your gimmick. So I found a new way to work around that. Oh. So my go to the week is Cody Bellinger. Had a great week. Solid. Um, June 10th to June 17th, he batted 348. Slugging percentage 783 for a 1265 OPS. He's still killing it for the Dodgers. Just um, unbelievable season he's having. Um, let's see, on the on the year right now, he's batting 355. He has uh, 23 home runs. I think that might be tied for the MLB lead. And um, the reason why I say all this is because um, I put a tweet out there the other day. If Cody Bellinger... Came up to bat the next 163 times and struck out every goddamn time. 163 up, strikes out 163 times. He would still have a higher batting average than current Phillies third baseman Mike Helfranco. That's wild. It's a good pick. That's sad. That's the music means the show is over for everyone else. But we're going to pick this up on Patreon. Uh, we, we still got rapid fire to do. Right, yep. CJ? Yes, we do. And we still got uh, a few other things that we want to talk about as well. I want you to finish your goat. But that was very good. No, I, I, dude, that was spicy the way you ended that. That was nice. It's just like, psh. That was brilliant. I, I really, I, I got a little bit of uh, <laughs> goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs>